Welcome, everybody. We're just having fun tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Wish you were here. Well, you are, in a way. <laughs> Before we get started, we're going to really share a powerful, powerful words that the Lord has spoken to both of us. And uh, I'd like you, John, to just share your um, poem that the Lord gave you. Yes. Yep. Yeah, the Lord had woken me up in, a, with, in an audible voice, and I wrote this down as fast as I could, and it's called The Nail. And you can find these pictures. There are, there are different sizes. And there's a, another picture that just has the cross on a sunset background. And you can find those at johnrigneyministries.com. And this is what the Lord told me when he woke me up. It's called The Nail. It started out just like every other day. There I was in a hand-woven basket waiting to deliver judgment to the guilty. After all, I'm just a nail. I've tasted a lot of men's blood. I always know the truth. I can taste their bitterness, anger, rage, and guilt. I'm the only one who knows the truth because a man can't hide his guilt. It flows through his veins. Yet there is something different about this day. All I could taste was love, forgiveness, and acceptance. If I could cry out and tell the people that this man was truly innocent, I would have but I couldn't because after all, I'm just a nail. As I held up this man for hours and felt his life slowly slipping away, I realized instead of holding up judgment, I was holding up righteousness. For after all, I'm just a nail. So it comes in the pictures and we also have bookmarks too that have the nail written on the back of them, bookmarks for your Bibles. Mm. How did you feel when the Lord woke you up and gave you that? I was a little nervous because I, I honestly questioned it at first and thought, I've never heard anything like that. Oh. And I didn't know, would people get it? Looking at, you know, from a nail's perspective mm -hmm. on that day. So I was a little taken back because I've never, I never went there in my mind to think about the elements or the different things like that during the crucifixion. And I think the Lord was giving me that as a, as a fresh way of looking how everything was impacted. Yeah. That it didn't matter. Yeah. All of creation knew that he was innocent. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 When you think about it, imagine what the crown of thorns, if the crown right. of thorns was alive, what the crown of thorns was. Right. So, you know, when you just... That can take you into all the different, like you said, all the yeah, different elements of absolutely. the crucifixion. Yep. What Jesus suffered. Yep. So I, uh, I'm just going to quickly show you what's on our website. I have a, a CD set called Soaking in the Glory, where I teach how to encounter the glory and then how to marinate and soak in the glory. And I teach what the glory is. And uh, many people have gotten it, and it really has helped them to grow spiritually. This is my goal is to really help people to grow in their intimate relationship with the Lord. That, that's an assignment that God gave me years ago. He told me uh, I was on a flight home from the West Coast uh, going to a conference and on my way back on the plane, he said to me, I've called you to be an apostle of intimacy. I'm like, I didn't know what an apostle was. I didn't really know what he was, what he meant by that. But that's become the whole thrust of my ministry is to lead people into intimacy with the Lord. Hmm. And so my books do the same as well. This book is called Abused by the Church for people that have gotten wounded or hurt by the church. And then it causes a lot of times people to just leave the church and never want to go back. And this helps you to not feel like you're alone in it, but how to reconnect safely back into a church body. And then I've got two prophetic books. When one is called Divine Encounters, and the other one, The Glory of God Revealed, where the Lord brought me to hell and heaven and showed me so many things in detail, and then brought me mm -hmm. into heaven to a special place. This, this is like the sequel to the first book, where he brought me just to heaven in this one. But then he also showed me what was coming with the great outpouring of the glory and what was going to be happening. And it's exciting to read it because the revelations he gave me a few years ago they're starting to come to pass now. Wow. So those are on the website, That's awesome. DonnaRigney.org. And 
Where is yours? Yours is on your website? Yep, johnrigneyministries.com. Okay, so now we're going to get started. Uh, today, when I was in prayer, um, I saw myself in the spirit, and I was floating down a river. Oh, I was just laying on my back, floating down the river. And I knew that this was the river of God that flows from the throne of God that I was on. Oh, and all week the Lord's been speaking to me about the oil of gladness. Oh, ah, that mm. he is like smearing us, cloaking right. us, covering us oh, with the oil of gladness. Amen. And it kind of helped me to understand why I laugh so much. Oh, ah, ah. <laughs> I thought it was me. <laughs> well, kind of, sort of. <laughs> but... <laughs> He, he wants to smear us with the oil of gladness. And, and I'm just going to I'll read a scripture that he gave me about this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> he got me going. <laughs> All right. From Hebrews 1, verse 9. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. So God's speaking this to us. For those of you mm. that have loved righteousness and hated wickedness, okay? Do we hate wickedness? Yes. yes. We don't hate wicked people. We want them to turn from wickedness and turn to God. But we hate wickedness. Right. We hate injustice. Huh? We hate murder. We hate the criminal activity. But we love the sinners. We want to see them because they're God's children. We want to see them changed. So with this, he says, you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, who's your God? God. God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. So God's Amen. saying to us, I'm anointing you with the oil of gladness. Yeah. Oh, ha. all week it's been speaking to me about the oil of gladness. And when I was in this river today, I was like, this is just wonderful. And I felt like I was just getting smeared while I was soaking in this river with this oil of gladness. And as this oil mm -hmm. oh, ha, was being poured out on me while I'm in the river, he's showing me that this oil is Thick, this oil of gladness, which is really the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Right. All right. right. So as this oil of gladness was being poured out on me, it was a, a putting a film of protection over me mm. uh, that what nothing could penetrate this oil right. of gladness. Oh, and God's saying, those of you that love righteousness and hate wickedness, I want to pour my oil of gladness out on you. Yeah, amen. I believe this is what's going to happen tonight in this place, that the mm. river of God amen. is going to flow powerfly in this place. So, uh, yeah. oh. And also he showed me that when you're really slippery with this oil, picture completely smeared in this thick oil, the enemy will try to grab you. But you know what? Slip right through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He can't get you. He cannot get a hold of you. Right. Oh, oh, oh. And God's saying, this is what's coming in this hour. You are going to yeah. see me pour my oil of gladness out on you and on amen. your loved ones. On your loved ones, too. Let's grab it for our loved ones. Yeah, amen. Huh? Amen. He's also shown me, oh, mm. you know, like it's kind of been this whole week I'm hearing this, but at the same time, he's been showing me that his wrath is going to be poured out. We are going to see the wrath of God. Not against us, but we will see it. We will observe it with our eyes, right. but we're not going to be partakers of it. We will watch and see the wrath of God being right. poured out. Right. I was watching... Um, Donald Trump and uh, on the news and Letitia James was issuing her decree that he had to pay $464 billion bond. And when I saw that, 
the shudder went through my whole being, just my whole being, just like a shudder. And I was like, oh my goodness, I could feel the wrath of God. You know, God gets angry. Right. There is such a thing as the wrath of God. A lot of times we hear a lopsided mm -hmm. gospel and we hear about the mercy of God. Is God merciful? Yes. Right. He's full of mercy. He's full of compassion and love, but he's also a God right. who is balanced and he hates sin. He right. hates evil. He hates wickedness. He loves the sinners, but he hates the wickedness. Right. And he will show forth wrath. And he showed me in scripture how many times we see his wrath. We saw his wrath at the great flood. Mm -hmm. There was so much evil and wickedness in the world. He destroyed the whole world except for right. what? Noah and his family. And Noah's ark. We, we see in, uh, in scripture the Babylonian captivity where the, right. the Israelites were worshiping other gods and they were unfaithful to him and not serving him. So he had the Babylonians come in and capture them and take them away. That's the, the wrath of God. Right. Then we also see the wrath of God with Sodom and Gomorrah. There was wicked sin right. in Sodom and Gomorrah. It was sexual perversion, homosexuality, mm -hmm. things like that were rampant in, in Sodom and Gomorrah. And right. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, completely ob obliterated it. Right. And it's clear in Scripture that God did it. And then we see in the New Testament, Ananias and Sapphira. They right. lied to the Holy Spirit about right. what they got, the money that they got for their... The price they purchased the land. Yeah, the price that they purchased, got that sold they the sold land. their land for, that they were dedicating it. They pretended that they gave the whole amount, which they didn't. They could have just said, no, this right. isn't the whole amount, but they lied. Right. And one by one, first he dropped dead, then she came in, lied to the Holy Spirit, she drops dead. Right. So that's at the beginning of the early church. Right. And then another one in the New Testament, King Herod. Everyone started honoring him and worshiping him, said he was like a god, that he was God. And he didn't say, no, I'm not. He took their, pra their praise and mm -hmm. adulation, and it says worms came and ate up his body, and he died. Right. So there is such a thing as the wrath of God. Yeah. And so what God has been showing me that we're going to see two things. We're going to see a great outpouring of his glory. We're going to see his love poured out. We're going to see his blessings poured out. We're going to see a great harvest of souls coming in. But we're also going to see the wrath of God, which is going to bring forth a fear of God that has mm. been lacking in the church. Right. In Amen. The world. Amen. We're going to see the fear of God. That's right. And, you know, Jesus came to bring mercy and grace he came to bring us a way out. If you think of the story of the woman that was caught in adultery, he stood up for her and he had mercy on her. But before she left his presence, what did he tell her? He told her, go and sin no more, lest a worst fate befall you. So Jesus had that mercy, but he also gave that warning because that's the both sides of the father. And so Jesus told her, Go and sin no more. Not try, do your best, try not to. He told her, go and sin no more. And that's the way we need to live our lives as Christians. Sometimes we over-mercy it. We over-mercy it. Well, I'll just pray for forgiveness tomorrow. You know, the Lord has mercy on me. But we have to understand that when he brings a word to us and he tells us to go and sin no more, that we have to obey that because then we're just handed over to the enemy and the enemy just has his way. But I'm telling you, your days of being robbed by the enemy are no more. And that's not just because I said it, it's because you're going to do something about it. You're going to be willing to change the areas in your life that need changing. You're going to allow yourself to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit so you can have that river of gladness and joy flow all over you. You know, that joy comes on you. you. If you turn the news on or you look at this world, everything is depressing. Everything is bad news. Everything, things are getting worse. Everything, you know, the border, people storming the border. Everything, everything, everything. And the Lord knows that 
if we're inundated with that, then that's the way we begin to perceive and believe. But if we're covered in his joy and gladness in that anointing and in that oil, we see it, but we also realize that God's bigger than it, that God has a plan. So how do you laugh in the midst of that? You have to, because God's still on the throne. Just because we have a corrupt leader doesn't mean there's no hope. Just because we have a leader who is bringing this nation in a wrong direction doesn't mean that we're just stuck with that and that we're just living in doom and gloom and what are we going to do? We serve a God that's bigger than our leader. Amen? Amen? And what he says goes. So in the midst of all this, through mom, if he's saying, you're going to get some joy in you, laugh. Yeah. Look at the news and laugh because you're having your day now. Today is your day. Tomorrow's God's day. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, 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 yeah. And if you think all this stuff is just going to go undone or swept under the rug, you're going to see it's not. So they may have their day today, but God's going to have his day tomorrow. Amen? Amen. And we can all feel joyful about that. Amen. Amen. I'm going to just share this word. Oh, uh, the Lord began to speak to me this week about a great turnaround that's coming. Just what he was just talking about. Uh, He said, the multitudes will run into my arms at the invitation of my followers. So Mm. who's the invitation going to come through his, right. his people. His people. Right. Okay? Right. This is going to be one of the most exciting hours in history. Mm. Okay? Good days Amen. are coming. Okay? Good days are coming. So, so we are going to see God's wrath poured out on the wicked and what they've done. We are going to see incredible blessings poured out on the righteous. That's just what's coming. He said, this is going to be one of the most exciting hours in history. Mm. Turnarounds will take place at a dramatic rate. Okay? Amen. Amen. Yes, those who are going the wrong way. Do we know a lot of people that are going the wrong way? Those who are going the wrong way will turn around and start heading in the right direction direction. Let's receive that Mm. right now for any of our loved ones that we know are going in the wrong way, that they will quickly turn around and run to the arms of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Then he talked about Trump. He said those who hated Trump Mm. and those and Trump and those like Donald Trump who profess the truth will suddenly have their minds changed and will begin not only liking him, but will become avid supporters. Yeah. All right? Amen. God's going to do this. God's going to do this. He's going to open up. He opened our eyes up to see things. Huh? We weren't right. always, you know, filled with the truth. We are now. How did it happen? God did it. Right. And God can reach anybody. So he's saying there's going to be a great turnaround coming and I'm going to reach people Mm -hmm. and turn them around. Mindsets are going to change. We pray for that tonight. Okay? Dismayed by the lies of those they trusted, their turnaround will be permanent. Amen. Okay, people are going to be really dismayed because have you ever trusted somebody and then found out that they were lying to you? And huh? how do you feel? Like, whoa! Especially the level of trust that you put in them is the level right. that you actually step back away and say, no more. No right, more. right. Okay? And God's saying that. He said, solidly rejected will those be that they formally adhered to. So the people that they formally adhered to, mm. they're going to reject solidly. Okay? Right. Yeah. Amen. Yes. This turnaround will be so dramatic, the wicked who deceived many will never recover from the landslide of eroded support. Mm-hmm. Oh, ha, ha. Amen. Whole parties will be destroyed in this upset. Mm-hmm. 
whole parties will be destroyed in this right. upset. Right. And I believe he's not just talking about the United States of America. Right. I believe that there's a lot of corrupt political parties ruling in many nations, not just ours. So right. uh, whose agenda is from the pit of hell. Right. It's wicked and evil. And God's saying these parties mm -hmm. are going to come to an end. Right. Amen. <laughs> oh, he said, I will set this in motion by the outpouring of my glory. Oh, Amen. peace will be the byproduct of this massive turning from wicked philosophies and ideologies that the corrupt espouse. Yes, this is so because peace is the byproduct of the truth. Yes. Yeah. His, his, he, he is truth. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You know, right. as we abide in him, as we keep our focus fixed on him, perfect peace will attend us. Mm -hmm. Peace and Jesus walk together. When Jesus rose from the dead, what was the first thing he said to his disciples? Peace I give to you. Right. Huh? Peace. Right. He said, many think that war, even a civil war, will erupt as eyes are opened, but these eye-opening revelations will produce unity. Amen. Your nation will become one nation under God again. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. You know, just a scripture that I got before I got on the plane today, um, delayed several, 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 several hours, <laughs> but made it here, yeah. is everything that you were just saying. And I want to read this because this is exactly everything right here in Scripture in Ezekiel. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. On that day, I cleanse you from all your sins. I will, uh, sorry, I will resettle your towns. i got to find the light. And the ruins will be rebuilt. The desolate land will be cultivated instead of lying desolate in the sight of all who pass through it. They will say, this land that was laid waste has become like the Garden of Eden. The cities that were lying in ruins, desolate and destroyed, are now fortified and inhabited. A turnaround. Then Walk the nations around. around you that, re will re that remain will know that I, the Lord, have rebuilt what was destroyed and have replanted what was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken and I will do it. The United States of America Amen. restored, other nations restored. Amen. Huh? Oh, and then he talks about the revival that's coming. Hey. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Once again, I will yield to Israel's plea and do this for them. I will make their people as numerous as sheep, as numerous as the flocks for offerings at Jerusalem during the appointed festivals. So will the ruined cities be filled with flocks of people. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's by the outpouring of his spirit. And I'm just going to read real quickly from uh, Ezekiel 47. And then we're going to take communion. I really believe that what God wants to do, not just tonight, but on a regular basis, is have all of us soaking, uh, floating in the river of his mm. presence. All right? Now, this is what it says in Ezekiel 30, 47, at, during worship tonight, and those of you that are at home and that aren't part of the worship, put your worship, worship music in and just enter into worship yourselves. Right. Because I really believe there's going to be a, a huge impartation of this oil of gladness mm. that we're going to experience tonight. Okay? Right, right. And I feel that what we've experienced is ankle deep, knee deep, huh? hip deep, but God wants to bring it over our heads. Right, All right? amen. So this is what it, it says in Ezekiel 47. Then the man, which was an angel, brought me, brought, that's Ezekiel, back to the entrance of the temple in this vision he was having. He was having a visitation. There I saw a stream flowing eastward from beneath the temple threshold. This mm. stream was passing to the right of the altar on its south side. So then the man brought him outside the temple and he began measuring it, okay? Measuring as he went, he led me along the stream for 1,750 feet and he told me to go across. At that point, the water was up to my ankles. 
So um, what God is showing me is, is the river of life. Who's the river of life? Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Huh? That as we get saved, we enter into the river. Right. I'm, I'm sorry for my sins. I confess my sins. Huh? We get cleansed as we go in the river. Our sins get washed away. But then we don't want to get out of the river and just go on with our lives. God invites us to stay in the river. Stay in right, the river. Right. Okay? Let that river go deeper and deeper. The river of my glory. The river of my presence. Huh? The river of my goodness. Mm. How do we do that? By seeking hard after him. Spending right. time with him. The more we spend time with him, the more the river gets deeper and deeper. So first it was ankle deep. And then at that, then he said, um, he measured up another 1,750 feet and told me to go across again. This time the water was up to my knees. After another 1,750 feet, it was up to my waist. So after another time of spending time alone with God, after another time of seeking him, right. and seeking his face, sinning apart with him, the river got deeper. Okay, right. the, each and every time, seeking him, serving him, doing whatever he says, okay? As right. we pray, like here tonight, we've been doing this for years. So oh, uh, that river is going deeper and deeper and deeper. He measured off another 1,750 feet and told me to go across. This time, the water was up to my waist. Then he measured another 1,750 feet, and the river was too deep to cross without swimming. So the river yeah. was over his head. Okay? And that's what we want. That's our goal. Oh, right. God. Right. For the river of God, the presence of God, to be com uh, completely submerged in it. Right. Oh, God. We right. can live. We can breathe in that river. It won't kill us. It won't drown us. Okay? Right. It's a river of his love. Suddenly, to my surprise, many trees were now growing on both sides of the river. And he said, the waters of this stream will heal the salty waters of the Dead Sea and make them fresh and pure. Okay? Mm. The waters of this river will purify you, will cause you to be clean and pure and beautiful. Right. Okay? Everything that touches the water of this river will live. Mm. Fish will abound in the Dead Sea, for its waters will be healed. Whatever, wherever this water flows, everything will live. This is the way the souls, huh? The fish, souls are going right. to come into the kingdom of God. Is right. with this great outpouring of the river of God, the mm. presence of God. All kinds of fruit trees will grow along both sides of the river. The leaves of these trees will never turn brown and fall. And there will always be fruit on their branches. You will be fruitful. Everything right. around you will be fruitful. Right. Your ministries, I believe those trees are your ministries, are the works right. that you're doing for God. They will be fruitful. There won't be any dead leaves or dead branches on them. There will be a new crop every month without fail. A new crop right. every month of fruit. You will be fruit bearers. Yeah. Oh, ha. for they are watered. By the river flowing from the temple, the fruit will be for food and the leaves for healing. Amen. Amen. You know, there are some of you here tonight or maybe some watching online that you've, you've been in that river and you've been ankle deep and you find yourself out of the river. Or maybe you've been in that river and you've gotten to your waist or even you've been swimming. But at some point in life, things happened, situations arose. The enemy came and robbed and stealed and destroyed your faith. Maybe he went after your marriage, your finances, and you found yourself outside of that river again. I'm telling you, the best place to be in that river is where you're swimming. Because there's a few reasons. If you stay in the river and you have almost like how they say one foot in the world and one in the church, if you stay in that river ankle deep, it's very easy to get out of the river. Yeah. You're right near shore. Yeah. So anytime the enemy brings in calamity or something happens, it's just a step away. And then you're back in the world again. You're back getting beat up by the enemy. 
And ankle deep feels good, but it's not safe. When you get to that point where, I'm just going to walk by you. When you get to that point where now you're knee deep and that was ankle deep over there and things start happening, it takes a little more effort to get to the shallow end in order to step out. You can't step out of the river knee deep. You have to walk back to where it's shallow to get out. So there's a path that the Lord can let, let there be some rescue and some healing and some prophetic to enter your life to say, hey, don't go near that edge. <laughs> don't go near that edge. It's harder to get out of. Now, when you're over here and you're swimming, it's so difficult to get back to that shallow water that you'll remain. And that's where your faith is so large that when the enemy launches an attack, it's taken you so long to get from there to here, you're just not going to give up that ground that easily. Amen. You're going to fight a little harder because it's a lot harder to go from the deep end to the shallow end than it is to go from ankle deep to the shore. You'll fight. You'll fight. And that's what God has for you in your marriages, in your relationships. And how do you get to that deep end? You're going to end up in the deep end and you're not even going to know you're in the deep end. It's not something that you have to do consciously. It's something that just happens as you are worshiping and you're following him. Yeah. Some people take a lot longer to get to the deep end than others. And other people just run right in. You ever go to the beach and you see kids, they just run right in the water. And some of you do that in worship. You run right in the water and you're <laughs> swimming around. Where if I go to the beach, I'm like, ah, going to test it. Get the thermometer. Needs two more degrees. Some of you take your time. You're worshiping. You're looking around. You're thinking about things. Did I leave the oven on? What time did my boss say I had to be into work tomorrow? Is my husband worshiping? I hope he's feeling what I'm feeling. I hope he finally changes. God. If a ceiling tile falls out of the ceiling and hits him in the head, Lord, I know it's you. <laughs> I do ask you, Lord, don't take him out, but just cause there to be a little pain. <laughs> and he'll know what I've been through. And all of a sudden, you've gone down this rabbit hole and you're supposed to be going deeper yourself. Because when you're out here, it's so much fun and so easier to say, hey, come with me. Hey, come with me. You're going to experience this. This is incredible. And when you find yourself, the enemy wants to distract you from going there. He wants to distract you from going there. And you have to train yourself to focus. I need my life changed. How many are here tonight that are desperate for your life to change? Lift your hand. And you don't let anything stop you from getting to that deep right. end. Amen. I'm going to say one more thing. I'm going to give it to you. That's okay. I remember, has anyone ever been up north like New England in the, in the fall, how cold it is? It was October. And this man came and knocked on my door and said, I want to be baptized. And the first thing I thought of was, is my tub big enough? And while I was thinking that, he said to me, I brought my towel, let's go down to the lake. And he caught me in one of those <laughs> off moments. I didn't have time to think. I said, yeah, sure, let's go. And my two boys came with me and we had the towels. As I was driving down to the lake, I noticed there's no leaves on the trees. <laughs> this is the time of year they reduce the water in the lakes. So... It took that 1,000 something feet to get from ankle deep to knee deep. Because the further we walked out, it was so shallow. And all of a sudden, I've walked out 300 feet and my sons are still on the shore, safety of the shore with the towels. <laughs> and my oldest son, Daniel's like, keep going, dad. And I'm thinking, I can baptize this guy in a mud puddle. But you know the rule of baptism. You have to be waist deep to be baptized correctly. 
It's in our classes. And so there, there I had to go another 100 feet to get out through. And now the sand is no more. Now it's all muck and mire and muck and seaweed. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm standing in. But by the time you're out here, there's no turning back. We both came out here. We're both freezing. What's that noise? Our knees knocking together. It's cold. You're getting baptized. But that man was desperate for his life to change. He would have carried me out there Oof. to be baptized because he had to do it. That's where we need to be to get to that deep end. You can't be a little desperate. You have to be completely sold out desperate. I don't care what the cost. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what I got to do, what I got to give up. Can anyone hear what I'm saying? I don't care what I got to give up. I don't care what I got to let go of. I don't care what I got to stop doing. I'm going to do whatever I have to do because I have to live in the deep end because there's no life in ankle deep anointing. Amen? Amen. And tonight, we're going to pull you to that deep water. <laughs> you might be challenged when you come up here to get prayer. I promise you this. I'll never prophesy over you what your sin is. I might just say to you, leave it. Deal? Deal. I won't embarrass you. Even if I know, I won't say it. Because the important thing is that you know. It's not important that I know. I'll just say, leave it. Leave it at the shore. Yeah. Leave it at the shore and come with me deeper. Amen. Deal? Deal. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, before we take communion, I just, uh, I'm going to have you lead us in communion, John. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to encourage you, not just for worship. Yes, absolutely for worship. We enter in with all your heart, you know, worship him with all that is within you. But also, Live a lifestyle of worship, okay? That's what I'm really encouraging you, that in order to live in that place where mm. you are ho, ha, over your head in love with Jesus, yeah. over your head, huh, serving the Father and living with the Holy Spirit, you've got to set aside time every single day to be with him. And I'm telling you, quality time. Not just, okay, when I'm going there for a run down the road, I'll pray. You can pray when you go rolling down the road. That's great. But also have time alone with him, listening to him, worshiping him, meditating on the word. He told Joshua, meditate on my word day and night, right. and you will be successful in all you do. So that's when we're alone with him that he heals us that he delivers us, that he shows us those little areas that the enemy's gotten into our lives that can become big areas, and he can nip it in the bud, get it off before it does any damage to us. Show us those areas where we need mm. to do a little more forgiving or a little bit more loving and caring. Show us those areas where there's some compromise. He's told me compromise kills. Oh, and that's living down where the water's ankle deep and jumping out and jumping back in. That's living a life of compromise. And watching what you're looking at. Watching who you're associating with. Oh, watch what you're speaking about. Oh, you know, the, the majority of our sins come from our mouth, from our tongue, but out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What are you meditating on? I can remember when I was a, a mom raising kids, all day long, the kids are at school, and I'm praying, God, help me be more patient. Help me be more loving. Help me to be nice, be a good mother. And I'm doing laundry, and I'm, like, taking the nails and stuff out of their pockets, and I'm like, look what they did. Look at this. Oh, look at that. Look. And I was all upset because of the, doing the laundry, the stuff I had to pull out of their pockets. And the Lord says, how are you going to be loving and kind? When they get home, if all you're thinking about is the things they've done wrong all day. Okay? I'm like, whoa. Hmm. Whoa. So God says, guard your mind. Guard what you're thinking about. Guard this thing. Guard hmm. it. 
Let the thoughts mm. be pure. Let the thoughts be his thoughts. Huh? Put a guard over your mind. Think on those things that are good, pure, and lovely. Huh? Make yourself think good thoughts. Okay? And then out of your mouth is going to come the abundance of what's in your heart, the good things. So I'm just encouraging you. Yes, absolutely. When we worship, that's huge. But let go from here, go from this place, and live a lifestyle of worship. Amen. I'm going to have you lead us in communion. Amen. All right. Amen. If everyone could stand. I'm going to give you two minutes if you're, if you're at home watching. I want you to take a couple of minutes before we take communion. And I want you in your mind to determine what it is you're going to leave at the shore tonight. Because we all have something to leave at the shore. There's not one person here that can say that they're sinless, that they have nothing to leave at the shore. We all have things to leave at that shore. I'm leaving things at that shore tonight. So take a couple of minutes and identify what those things are. And I want you to imagine yourself in a box, literally putting those things in a box and putting them on the shore. This is what Jesus came and paid the price for, is so that you and I are able to do that, and that our sins aren't hung around our necks and keep us from the Father. Jesus came to pay the price for the things you put in that box tonight. He hung on that cross for those things that you put in that box, so that the Father could look at you and I, so that we could have a relationship with the Father. Those things block it, but Jesus paid the price for them. So we're not going to pick those things back up because he was crucified for those things. So I pray that you take communion so seriously that the pain and suffering that Jesus went through was real. He did not summon a legion of angels to get him off that cross. He did not determine that he wasn't going to feel every pounding of that nail through his wrists and his feet, through the beatings that he took. And he was completely and totally innocent. But he took all that for the things that we just placed in those boxes tonight. That's how much he loves us. So Jesus, we take that price that you paid and that sacrifice and we promise you that we will not pick those boxes back up. We will not go take the contents out of that box tonight and put it back in our pockets, Lord. We will leave it there. We wash it and cleanse it by your blood, by your body that was broken for us, for our sin. Let's eat. And that blood that was shed over all those items in the boxes tonight gives you and I the ability and the freedom to be able to go deeper in that river and experience the Holy Spirit. If we're riddled with sin, we can't experience the full measure of the Holy Spirit. But when we're cleansed by this blood and we are forgiven by this blood, then we can enter those deep places that the Holy Spirit longs for us to dwell, where you can be used in your gifting and your callings like never before, where the Lord can start taking you and your life can start counting in that spiritual realm, where you can start becoming that person that you've only dreamed of becoming. This is what makes all that possible. So we apply this blood that was shed on that cross to every area of our lives, so that we can be cleansed and free and that we're able to enter into that depth of that river tonight. In Jesus' name, let's drink. Thank you, Jesus.
Lord, we thank you so much. I'm going to release the glory on all of us. All right? Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, we'll do that after. We'll do that after. I release your glory, Lord. I release your glory. Ho, ho, ho. Let your glory flood every single one. Ho, ha. In the name of Jesus, I release your glory. Huriasa. I release your glory on everyone watching, on everyone's home and their loved ones. In the name of Jesus, I release your glory. Just by faith, receive. I release your glory, Lord. Rasa ka shabasitia. I release your glory, Lord. Rabasikiata. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hu kabasa. Hu basata. We're going to worship now. Ho, 